bringing you the latest news from around the world and here at home. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. And I'm Nicola de Zoza. Let's start off with a look at the headlines. President says no agreement to provide China access to Sri Lankan ports for defence purposes. Social media ban to be lifted on Friday. 280 arrested for committing criminal offences. Operations at universities and higher education institutes hampered by non-academic staff strike. In an interview with NHK World, President Maithripala Sirisena dismissed concerns over leasing the Hambantota port to China. The president is currently on an official visit to Japan. We forge agreements after paying due regard to all concerns, such as not threatening another country regionally or internationally in any manner, or exerting pressure in areas of security. There is no allowance under the agreement we signed for them to use our ports for military or defence purposes. We will not agree to such a thing with anyone. The public has given us the responsibility for the benefit of the country as a government. We want to meet our responsibilities with a national and international program of work. We are not concerned about other political situations and external factors. President Maitri Palasirisena was granted an imperial audience with Emperor Akihito and Empress Michiko at the Tokyo Imperial Palace today. The president expressed his wish to strengthen the centuries-old relationship between Sri Lanka and Japan. The Japanese emperor's visit to Sri Lanka in 1981 and the welcome extended by the people of the country was recalled at this meeting. Following the discussion, the emperor and the president toured the Tokyo Imperial Palace. The president also attended an investment forum in Tokyo. The Med Department says the prevailing showery condition is expected to reduce to some extent from tomorrow. It states the low-pressure area in the vicinity of Sri Lanka is moving away from the country towards the Arabian Sea. Due to the wavy atmospheric nature, the north, central, eastern, southern and Uwa provinces experienced heavy rainfall accompanied by gale winds yesterday. Many fishing communities refrained from setting out to sea today. A tornadic water sprout was witnessed this morning in the seas of Dontohead in Matara. Three fishermen who set out to sea from Muletivu are reported missing. Police said the Sri Lanka Navy has launched an operation to locate the missing men and their boat. The fishermen are aged 50, 48 and 24 years. Pulunarwe experienced a slight rainfall today. Six of the sluice gates of the Parakuma Samudwe, which were opened, have been closed and the other four sluice gates have been opened by a foot each. Assistant engineer KK De Silva said the gates release 560 cubic feet of water per second. The Met Department forecasts showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the north central, eastern, Uber and southern provinces. It adds under the influence of the system the possibility for heavy showers or thunder showers and sudden gruffness associated with sudden increase of wind speed up to 70 to 80 kilometers in the sea areas of the coast extending from Hambantota to Mana via Gaul and Colombo is high. Sri Lanka police convened a media briefing today to report on action taken regarding the incidents that have taken place in Kandy. A total of 280 suspects were arrested for committing criminal offences. On the 7th of March, we arrested 10 people for instigating communal disharmony and for promoting hate and violence. Vidana Patironage Amit Jeevan Veera Singha is a resident from Kengala. Nasnararan Patige Suredh Suravira is a resident from Kimul Godayakkala. Sampath Anurasri Kumar Singha is from Vevalavava, Dambulla. Arachi Kumbure Sobirathero is from Kumitikulia, Bangadenia. Asiri Chaturanga is from Kurunduvatta Chilau. Isuru Priyankara Kumara is from Rajavalla. Sumit Chaminda is from Handagiriya, Balangoda. Asanka Pradeep Veera Singha is from Kengala. Jainath Anton Gunaratna is from Murutalava, Peradenia. Rashmita Bandara Mahavatta is from Kalamba Road, Chilau. The Terrorist Investigation Division is conducting the investigations on them. Early this morning, an office of the chief suspect was inspected. It is located in Nattarampota, Kundasale. Officers discovered hundreds of thousands of documents which contained material to promote disharmony and violence. They were to be distributed by them. 
Among the other documents were cash receipts for money that was given to them. They also had a microphone with a logo prepared to convene media briefings. Based on the statement given by the chief suspect, detectives were able to locate bottles suspected to be petrol bombs allegedly being prepared to commit criminal offences. They discovered seven such bottles. So, at a media briefing convened in Colombo today, Minister of Digital Infrastructure and Foreign Employment, Harin Fernando, explained the reasoning behind the ban imposed on social media. If people are using Facebook to gather others to attack and kill another person, what is the law? So after making constant requests to Facebook to remove these pages, and when they are not done immediately, this puts us in a bit of an issue. It was then that we realized that Facebook does not have the resources nor the human resources to process or read content in Singhala. They themselves admitted this. So we have communicated with the officials at Facebook in writing on the measures to be taken over this matter and also about which one of our institution's recommendations do we implement. We believe it is our profound duty to protect the country's reconciliation and security. Therefore, we have clearly requested for these two aspects only and they have responded in writing. Now a team will arrive in the island tomorrow night to discuss the issue in detail with the President's Secretary as President Maithripala Sirisena is currently overseas, the Prime Minister and with the officers of the Telecommunication Regulatory Authority. After holding discussions with them on Thursday, we are hoping to design this. We are satisfied with what they have sent to us in writing. But through discussions, we will be able to clarify all aspects. I have already spoken to the President over the phone. We believe we will be able to return things to normal by Friday. Views were also expressed on accessing social media platforms through a virtual private network or VPN. Downloading a VPN is illegal. It is an offence. According to what I have been informed, about 800,000 people in Sri Lanka have downloaded a VPN. As we speak, around 1 million people are active on Facebook, which means 1 million people have downloaded a VPN. Download free, you know. There is only one law in the country. Nowhere in the Computer Crimes Act of 2007 does it say that using an alternative technology as this is an offence, nor can you arrest anyone for doing so. So the people are ahead in terms of technology. It is not illegal to use a VPN under any act in Sri Lanka, nor can any arrest be made. The state of emergency is now over. And according to the 19th Amendment and the Right to Information Act of 2016, no one can prevent the general public from gaining access to information. People from various sectors have requested the block imposed on social media be lifted. Many investors who had their sights set on Sri Lanka have taken a step back. As a country and as an industry, when you look at the investment aspects, we have suffered an insurmountable loss. Trust must be gained once again. The loss and disrepute earned during this week is insuperable. Action was taken on WhatsApp and Viber based on the powers vested with the TRC. We commended that. When things of this nature happen, this is usually how the world responds. We have a peaceful environment now. Therefore, we request the restrictions imposed on social media platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp and Viber be lifted. If this blockade on Facebook continues, I believe it is in violation of basic human rights. The people need to be given freedom and the law needs to be enacted against those who violate that freedom. The government must have the right to make a decision. We believe the government would make a decision to lift the ban immediately. The Colombo Chamber of Commerce in a statement has requested for the ban on social media platforms be lifted. They propose a national policy be adopted while allowing users to browse social media under certain supervision. The government has decided to lift the ban imposed on Viber, allowing users to once again access the popular messaging platform. A statement from attorney at law Sudarshan Gunavardhana, the director general of government information, said that the decision was made after taking into account the difficulties experienced by Sri Lankan expatriates. In addition, the government has also looked into the inconvenience caused to tourists as well as small businesses that were affected by the ban. Let's now cross over to the newsroom where Chaturanga Haparachi is standing by with an expert to further elaborate on the ban imposed on social media and the dangers of using alternate means to access the web.
We are going to talk to uh, Mr. Buddhika Sena Sekhara, the head of digital at the Capital Maharaj Organization Limited, as well as an executive council member of the Computer Society of Sri Lanka, also known as the CSSL, about the social media, certain websites, social media websites not being accessible after the incidents that transpired in Kandy last week. Uh, Mr. Sena Sekhara, let me draw your attention to uh, this issue that everyone seems to be interested in. Social media ban. This is a new concept to Sri Lanka. This has not been done before. But uh, looking at things, what is happening? Yeah, social media ban is a new uh, concept or a new experience to Sri Lankan uh, users. Yeah. Uh, it's not a ban on the internet, but a uh, ban or a, or a prevention of uh, accessing the social media, certain so social media, selected social medias like Facebook and WhatsApp, either via applications or uh, through the websites. Uh, so the, the Sri Lankan public has not been able to access these social medias uh, ever since this uh, ban or the, the called so-called ban is uh, implemented. Sir, now when things like this happen, uh, people have found out alternatives or a shortcut method to go in and use these uh, websites. They are using a virtual <coughs> private network or a VPN because now there seems to be an opinion in the masses that using a VPN and accessing social media websites like Facebook and so on uh, is an illegal method. Is, is that the right way to put it? Or? No, that is not the right way to put it because the businesses and certain individuals who does business with uh, foreign uh, clients and uh, with uh, different parties has been using VPNs paid or free uh, legitimately uh, but there is a danger which most of the people now Sri Lankan uh, community public got to know about this VPN uh, usage and what is VPN and how to use it and the fact that it can be used to access uh, certain restricted sites only with these incidents but uh, what they didn't know was that also posed a lot of danger especially the, the free VPNs uh, which actually opens a, a direct uh, passage to your uh, computer or the phone or whatever the, the instrument that you are using it. Uh, but, uh, uh, and also like there was a phenomena uh, to uh, block the VPNs uh, also, but that's not an, uh, that shouldn't have been the approach because it's rather impossible to block all the VPNs. There are hundreds and thousands of VPNs clients out there uh, in use. Uh, Mr. Senasekar, now you're a member of the or executive council member of the CSSL. Now, among the professionals, we know that there is going to be a group of Facebook uh, employees, officials from Facebook, going to come into Sri Lanka and hold discussions with the government. Now, from a point of view of professionals who are involved in the IT sector, what should the approach of the government be when the Facebook officials come here? Yeah, I also, we also as professionals also have heard about this uh, uh, representatives of uh, Facebook is going to come in here. Uh, from the negotiation point of view, we should focus on opening an avenue to address these type of issues. Uh, it should not be on a basis that uh, we tell them that block this, block that, uh, or restrict these areas. Uh, I don't think it's feasible. More viable thing would be to get them to have a permanent representation of Facebook either in Sri Lanka or uh, worse into the region so that uh, the, the concerned parties uh, can take their concerns or grievances or, or any issues uh, which are really issues and uh, uh, problems which is using Facebook. Uh, there should be a, a facilitation for uh, such parties, legitimate and representative parties to take such matters into them. So ideally they should be having a presence here and we believe that I mean uh, with, with the developments uh, took place the previous uh, times and also what is happening now and what may happen in the future is an ideal time to uh, uh, base our negotiations or discussions on, on such base. A social media website like Facebook, massive operation happening but they also seem to have found mechanisms to uh, stop or remove any content that is violate, violating a copyright of someone else. Now, 
can't that similar uh, software or the technology be used when controlling things like uh, hate speech and yeah uh, yes it can be used uh, for instance uh, if you upload your personal video but which contains a copyrighted music clip or any other copyrighted content uh, audible Facebook is very quick to recognize that and let you know that this has been a copyrighted material and so they have the uh, uh, artificial intelligence based uh, software algorithms and also certain uh, tools to automatically identify them. Similarly, they have on their own and also uh, third party based tools to identify the sentiments of what is expressed, what is commented in either language, Tamil, Sinhala uh, and English to identify these sentiments and also there is a mechanism for the Facebook users or the affected parties to report certain things so that it will become a non-knowledge for Facebook to consider such uh, such words and uh, uh, phrases as uh, uh, bad sentiments or negative sentiments. So they could use that but we should be having a mechanism to bring these concerns into Facebook. That's why I said, I mean, I'm mean, coming back to uh, having its high time to uh, have a uh, official or a legitimate representative of uh, Facebook in Sri Lanka. An event organized in Anuradhapura today set an example on promoting harmony and unity among all communities. 45 monks from Thailand visited the sacred grounds of Anuradhapura today. These monks move towards Niravya village in Nanradhapura where a majority of the residents are Muslims. These villages provided arms to the Mahasangha, reminding the nation of the importance of harmony among all. UNP local government representatives have voiced concern over issues they have faced following the local government elections. UNP representatives from Dikwela convened a media briefing today and expressed their dismay. I was preparing to contest the local government election from the electorate. However, they took away that opportunity from me. I requested an opportunity to enter the Pradeshi Sabha. My name was included into the national list as number one female representation. After taking all I had to offer, they have cast me aside. The women who were in second, third and fourth positions have been given post as councillors. I doubt if any of them even have the party membership. I should be given the post of local government member. If not, all those who have been treated unjustly have decided to leave the party. On the 9th of March, several members from the Sri Jawardhanapura Kota Municipal Council protested opposite the UNP headquarters Sirikota against nominations made for the local government institutions. Thereafter, members from a number of local government institutions, including from Paul Gahavela, Damana, Kaduvela and the Hiyovita, voiced their dismay. If this situation continues, there will be no one to support the election campaigns of the United National Party. I was not allowed to contest. I was number four, but they replaced me with a defeated individual. We protected the United National Party and we protected the leadership. If I was treated like this, what else can they say about the rest? Good evening to our viewers. We're joining you once again from the newsroom. Now, with what we just reported, UNPers at the village level are expressing their frustration regarding the decisions taken by the party leadership. And we saw this uh, many, at many locations across the island. I have with me Mr. Faraz Shaukadani. Faraz, what are your views? Yeah, good evening. Um, well, uh, that's because uh, the people have lost confidence in the party. Um, the issue is with the leadership not thinking about the grassroots UNP supporter. Decisions are taken by people who are at the helm of the party, who have not even been elected, and who are there at the helm because of their close affiliation and affection to the leadership of the United National Party. Now, for us, if we take a look at the map that I have here, uh, with the election results of the 2018 local government elections, we see that the UNP has only been able to garner 29 percent, close to 29 percent of the vote here. You see everything in maroon and a little bit of green here and there. Mm. Now, th th what is this? What does this show? 
Well, what this shows is that it clearly demonstrates that the UNP vote base have lost confidence in the leadership of the party because the government, which is mainly the United National Party, has not delivered on its promise to put away the corrupt. The UNP politicians uh, seem to think that the people have forgotten uh, the case about Arjuna Mahendran. The Prime Minister said the very first time that uh, Mr. Mahendran was uh, leaving the country. At the time, the Prime Minister said that he was going for a wedding and that he'd be back, and indeed he did come back. But right now, the people are waiting for Arjuna Mahendran to return to Sri Lanka and to face the allegations, the charges against him. Now, for us, another reason that may be, be for the United National Party members or the supporters of the United National Party, uh, UN peers at the ground level or the grassroots level, as they call it, to be upset, is that the leadership of the, the current leadership of the United National Party has been in power for 24 long years. The current leader of the United National Party, Rani Vikram Singh, was appointed to this position in the year 1994. Now, from that time onwards, he has been the leader of the United National Party. There has been uh, no, there has been no change in the party leadership, whereas we've seen the United National Party losing many elections. That's right. Uh, and this time round, uh, the United National Party are in power. They have the government as well as key ministries. But the local government results indicate that the people have rejected that party. Now, in that background, against that background, in that ambience, how ethical is it for Rani Wickram Singer to hang on to power and to remain the leader of the United National Party? Malik Samaru Wickram is a nationalist MP from Kandy with close affiliations and, as I said before, affections to the United National Party. He didn't even go to Kandy during the recent incidents there. We have a problem with the United National Party because it is the largest democratic political party in the country and therefore there should be democracy within the party itself. There is a real danger that if democracy is not present within the United National Party, there is a real danger that the United National Party will be overtaken and overwhelmed by other corrupt political parties. For us with that, let's take a look at the cartoon that has been drawn by a resident cartoonist, Asanka Laduheti, with regard to these topics that we are in discussion. In the past, academic activities across medical faculties of state universities have been hampered for over six months because of issues surrounding CITEM. Now, for the 14th consecutive day, trade union action by non-academic staff has brought universities to a standstill. Activities at 15 government universities, three campuses and 18 higher education institutions, all governed by the University Grants Commission, have been hampered by this trade union action. As a result, more than 200,000 students following internal and external courses within the ambit of the university system have been affected. Activities across the university system have been hampered and so has our educational activities. The campus has been closed for days. All we ask for is an opportunity to pursue our studies. University operations are at a standstill due to the trade union action by the non-academic staff. The day-to-day -day activities are being handled by the administrative officers. All other activities have stalled. I wish to request all these factions to enter into a dialogue and solve this matter so we can once again commence our operations. We cannot allow education activities to be hampered. More than 15,000 non-academic staff engaged in this trade union action citing several demands including a solution to the monthly salary allowance. They demand it to be enforced as per the agreements reached in 2016. As the University Grants Commission nor the Ministry has responded to their demands so far, the non-academic staff staged an island-wide protest opposite all universities in the country. 
News First made several attempts to contact the chairman of the University Grants Commission for a comment on the matter. However, our attempts proved futile. The International Monetary Fund has said the fifth tranche of the 1.5 billion US dollars extended fund facility to Sri Lanka is in the process of being reviewed and the board decision on the disbursement is expected in a few months. The clarification from the IMF came as a response to an inquiry by News First as to whether the IMF had put on hold the fifth tranche due to the government's failure to implement an automatic pricing mechanism for fuel by March this year. An IMF press officer told News First, media reports claiming the withholding of the fifth tranche over non-implementation of the APM is misleading. Stay tuned. Base First in Focus follows with a discussion on training and skills development in the aviation industry. And with that, we wrap up tonight's news. Thank you for joining us. For the News First team, I'm Nicola De Zoiza. And I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Take care and good night. Good night. Thank you.